Hello, welcome everybody to Dimensional Talent Streams. Again, I'm your host, Valerie Williams. Today we have a special guest who is no stranger to the Dimensional Talent Stream studio. We have Bob Swartz. Um, who is one of our advertisers in the house. Again, he has graced us with his presence before, and we're just going to have him back to talk about this time, what is the best type of advertising to do? You know, he's got all of the secrets through trial and error and just such a uh, sounding board and kind of a consultant as well as to the best advertising to do, verbiage and wording and you know just how it should look aesthetically and so we've got him in the house to kind of share and talk with us today so welcome back Bob I'm so glad to have you here with us today uh, thank you Valerie it's my pleasure completely thank you yeah so again tell us refresh those who may not have seen your first interview with us here on Dimensional Talent Streams tell us again who Bob Swartz is your business Yep. And just a little bit about who you are before we jump in. Yeah, for, so first of all, I'm a grateful believer in Jesus Christ. And um, I'm, <laughs> praise God, I'm also a, a dad and a husband. I publish a, a home business magazine um, called Home Business Advertiser. Yes. And, um, and that's, that's my passion. I work with small business owners from all over the country and help them generate leads and uh, develop funnel systems and follow-up systems to close prospects. So I've been, and I've been doing that for 17 years. It's, it's a good little business. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. And tell us again, how you got started in the advertising business? Like why advertising? Yeah. So I don't know if it's generational or not, but like when growing up, my mom, um, she, she was a single parent for a couple of years after my dad died. My dad died when it was, when I was seven years old and she worked, she had to go out and, you know, hustle a little bit. And one of the things she found that she was really gifted in is, is selling um, advertising. She got into radio advertising. So she worked for a local AM radio station, just selling local ads. And her clients really liked working with her. My mom's name's Linda because she, um, she would not just, she would really take time to help the advertiser, whether it was a restaurant or a plumber or a guy selling countertop, you know, custom countertops locally, she would really take time to um, find out more about that person's business and how to best promote them to the public. Um, so I think advertising has just been in my blood. Yeah. And then I had built up a network marketing income when I was pretty young. It wasn't a lot of money, but it was enough to, to you know, to live comfortably. Mm -hmm. And then when my uh, first wife, found out that we were having uh, a child. Uh, this is back in 2003. Um, She's like, hey, you know, you got to go out and get a real job. This network marketing affiliate marketing is not going to, you know, she didn't feel comfortable enough. So, so I did go out. I interviewed at a bunch of places, Valerie, and everybody was either like, you're underqualified or you're overqualified and you're not a good fit for this company. And just walking out um, of the one interview um, of a publishing company, the guy, who owns Clipper Magazine. He has like 600 publications up and down the East Coast. I said, why don't you think about starting your own magazine? And I was like, hmm, okay, maybe so. So, um, you know, I prayed about it, asked God about it. Um, and, you know, we decided to start the magazine. I reached out to one of my really good friends in the industry named Randy Wolf. Mm -hmm. He's down in Florida. Okay. And I said, Wait, do you know Randy? No, I don't. Oh, he's, he's a great guy. He's been doing this for like 40 years. And I said, hey, listen, why don't you start a magazine Randy, and I will help sell ads for you. And he said, no, no, no. He said, why don't you start a magazine and I'll sell ads for you. <laughs> and I'm like, for real. I was like, that's a lot of responsibility, but I'll try it. And our first issue, we were profitable back in 2003. Mm -hmm. And, you know, praise God, like we've been profitable ever since. Wow. 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 It was in the blood. It definitely was in the blood. <laughs> so yes, ma'am. Absolutely. So did you have a, you said you talked about a network. So you had a network before you started the actual magazine? Yeah, so I had um, followed a, a, a networker, kind of like a mentor named Mark Yarnell. Mm -hmm. And um, he was from British Columbia. Um, he was really successful in a company called New Skin back in the 80s and early 90s. Okay. And um, I mean, super successful. The guy just had a gift to encourage people and make them feel good about themselves and push them outside their comfort zones to do more 
than they felt that they could do in, in their own power. And I mean, this guy was, I mean, I know it's not all about money, but I think he was making like $400,000 a month, wow. in school, like almost half a million dollars a month. And um, he lived very modestly. Um, and he, he gave a lot of the money away. He had prison ministries, mm. you know, and I just say that to say he wasn't just all about, you know, himself, you know, he was right, like, oh, right, he. right. So, um, so yeah, Mark came out with this tape called this tape is banned. And it was a little cassette tape. And the, the idea was that, and this, there was a sales message and a story on this little cassette tape. And I was always a big believer that sales tools were so important because, um, you know, they say, yeah, systems are duplicatable, but people are not. Mm. So I just pictured myself like, hey, listen, I can get these little 25 uh, cent cassette tapes and either hand them out or mail them out to people that are looking for a business opportunity. Um, and I took that tape and I probably sent out, I mean, slowly, maybe, a, you know, 100 tapes a month and then 200 tapes a month and then a thousand tapes a month until eventually like, uh, you know, praise God again, like I became the number one recruiter in that company called Legacy for Life. Um, and I, I think we had hit like a 250,000 club members. Um, it, it was just, it was really great experience. I learned a lot. Um, Mark passed away. The company changed ownerships and compensation plan. And I just thought, ugh, I don't, I don't want to be in a network marketing company, even though there are people that do really, really well in that. Right. right. Um, but I thought I would rather help network marketers generate leads and clicks and traffic and you know, lead capture pages and, and just, cause that's, that's what I love to do. Right. Um, right. 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 Yeah. So that's interesting. You talked about having like a little product or something to sell along with your service. Talk a little bit more about that. So when you, when a product, I mean, as far as like when I was working with legacy or with, yeah, well, just in general, cause you mentioned about how this gentleman had like a little tape and what a little tape. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, those little cassette tapes that used to yeah. pop in like, mm-hmm. our boom boxes, you know? Yeah, so, yeah. so, so he had a sales message and it was 25 minutes on one side. That was all about the product. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it was a protein powder. Um, it was good for like helping people lose weight and manage their appetite sure. and build muscle. And then on the other side, it was more about the business opportunity. Um, and it was just a really good, inexpensive sales tool. Um, and then after the, the cassettes kind of went away, uh, they had burned that message onto a, a CD Right. And people would, you know, mail out the CDs or give them out to prospects mm-hmm. saying, hey, listen, I, 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 I know you're interested in health and nutrition. You want to take yeah. care of yourself. Check this out and then let me know if you're interested at all. And if not, just pass it off to somebody else. Yeah. So it was a really great sales tool. Um, and I guess there are sales. And now, I guess because of the Internet, things have morphed where the sales messages are, you know, our Zooms like that, recorded Zoom, rec- live and recorded Zooms, webinars um you know conference calls all sorts of things so i guess the cassettes and the you know the dvds are are out because now the information is instantly available to anywhere all around the world you know and it's free you don't have to pay 25 cents it's just like hey check out my webinar if you're interested let me know and that's the neat thing about where we are today like if if you can build up a list of prospects you know that are looking for a business or or just looking for whatever you have to offer i mean if you you know if you sell ice cream you know, you're, and you need a list of people locally that you sell ice cream to, you know, build up the list of, and, and just market to that list. And I, I really think it is, it really does boil down to that, like generate leads, build your list, contact your list as often as possible, you know, through emails, through direct mail, through text messaging, through, you know, live interaction, just to call them up and say, Hey, how are you doing? How can I help you? Um, and always ask for referrals. So I, I think it really does come down to the basics. Right. And, right. and helping folks just do the same thing, mm-hmm. you know, that you and I are doing right now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I like that idea about um, having like a little sales product, you know, because, you know, you, if you think about it, like, yes, we're more digital now and we can get things readily available. So my wheels are turning as you're talking. Um, because I think about how, you know, I've got my book here that you can see here in the background, mm-hmm. but, you know, you, we can offer some of these books digitally, our message mm-hmm. digitally. Um, we can offer it in an ebook style. 
Mm -hmm. You can offer it in kind of like a quick little blog, you know, to give people a taste and to really um, try to connect with them, to really connect with them and to kind of, I, I don't want to say the word drip, but we really are dripping now yeah. trying to use it as attraction marketing to kind of attract and really, really build. So I really, really like that idea. Tell us in your journey with advertising, because you send out a lot of emails and I love how you give like tips and you talk about, hey, you know, out of my magazine this month or this quarter, this particular uh, gentleman or gal had this particular article. It worked really well. Let me tell you the ingredients of what they had in mm -hmm. their ad that worked really well. Talk to us a little bit more about what you have seen that is working really well for our audience that's going to watch this, hear this, um, of just some things that you have found in your journey that have worked as far as doing ads. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. So one of the things, sorry about that. I thought I had my phone turned off. Okay. Um, one of the things that, um, that I noticed is, okay, it was, you know, so we published a home business magazine and back like four or five years ago, folks started telling me, which I didn't like to hear, but I just had to accept it as, as kind of reality is that people were like, hey, Bob, people are going more digital. They are going to start reading their newspapers and their magazines online. You know, what are you going to do about that? So we did find a solution uh, to publish them. So we take our printed magazine and then we publish it online. Right. Um, so it's the same magazine, both in print and online. Mm -hmm. And for the people that like me, who like a tangible product, like I would like to read your book in a digital format, but I really would like to have a tangible copy too. Right, right. You know, so it's nice to have both. Um, but what I started to recognize as far as the advertising is like, okay, like to me, it's second nature. Like I've been helping people write ads and, and learning what works and what doesn't work for like 20 years now. So, so what if I, what if I, what if I could, you know, take a little tour of the magazine and that's what I've been doing. You know, there's tools online you know, where you can make a recording and go through a magazine or go through your, your book and kind of like talk about certain chapters or, or certain things in the ad. And it, it seems like folks have really responded well to that. So in other words, like if, if we have an advertiser that runs a half page ad in the magazine mm -hmm. and maybe they get 30 or 40, you know, leads to the magazine, maybe like one of them, one or two of them are really, really good. Mm -hmm. um, so let me tell other advertisers about that. Right. And, and, and there's so many benefits to it. Number one, there's benefit to me because I'm kind of bragging about a magazine and say, hey, this really does work. Mm -hmm. It helps the advertiser because they're like, they're getting more eyeballs on their ad. And they're like, exactly. wow. You know, and then it helps the reader too, because they're like, I could be interested in that opportunity or I could learn something from it. You know what I mean? So it's just kind of like a win, win, win. And it, it it's, it's great. I love it. I love sharing the success stories. The one thing, um, I could do a better job about, I, I don't know, I feel comfortable with doing this is like, like this issue, I had a full page advertiser that didn't renew. And it was the first time he didn't renew in about six years. Okay. So it's like, I don't know exactly how to handle that. Like, do I, you know, go out and say, Hey, here's an ad that didn't renew. I, I don't think that's the right thing to do. Um, because he had his own reasons for not renewing and it might not have had anything actually no it did have something to do with the magazine he said the last two issues he hadn't ha had it made like a big sale okay. and for him that that's really really important that's part of his business model he needs to you know make money doing that so um so yeah i'm i'm, I'm kind of trying to figure out like how i can help him because i don't want to get on there and be like hey here's another that didn't work you know, right, 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 right. But and see, that's why, you know, for everybody who's listening, watching or and later on, that's why I love having Bob Swartz on because he's so down to earth. He's so transparent. And for a business guy to come on here and know that he's going to be on Zoom and know that this, you know, be on an interview and to say, hey, I had a client who was with me for six years and all of a sudden you didn't. Uh, you don't hear that a lot publicly you may hear it privately so that sells a lot to um you know our guest today bob swartz and who he is his character um and integrity and you know transparency um and wanting you know so you're getting that when you work with bob swartz uh you know, thank you you're getting that education you're you're you know that you're getting somebody that's down to earth you know even if you learn something you're, you're definitely taking something away from bob swartz and that's what i can um definitely say about him he's really dear to my heart um, thank you but, I feel 
<laughs> but I, for, for me, Bob, I would just say, do you, if you feel like, you know, I feel like have a conversation with him mm -hmm. because nowadays when you have, you're working with business owners and for whatever reason, they part ways or whatever, we, we don't follow up with them. And what kind of message does that leave? Does it leave we're all about just our businesses and making the sale or how much do we value that business relationship? Because if we were to reach back out or even touch base and say, hey, I just want to touch base. You know, you've been with me for six years. I do understand, um, you know, if you hadn't gotten a sale or what, what have you, and that really is the lifeblood of any business. But, you know, if there's anything else I could do or any recommendations, Let's look at the ad that you have. Is it an ad that you have been running for a long time and haven't switched it up a little bit? Um, can we can we tweak it a little bit or maybe not run? Did you how what was the size of your ad? And how about we do like a smaller ad or maybe that's a great idea opposite spectrum? Or let's look at some other methods because you know I do funnels, I, I do click 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 bank and we I do a, another thing let's let's play around with some options because I know with me you did that with me and I said hey I want to switch things up a little bit I mm -hmm. still want to work with you I want to let you go <laughs> but I want to um, you know I'm learning as well um and I want to switch things up a little bit I want to try this and da 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 mm -hmm. and so I did that and you were gracious so I would say reach out because it's going to strengthen your relationship with him even the more because nowadays it's so rare because you know we get caught up in the in the revenue stream of our business and the lifeblood so to have that touch even mm -hmm. when things aren't going right and you're still in the trenches with them to say hey let's let's talk a little bit about this so what did you find and you know okay let's look at your ad and you, you've been running this ad for how long has it been the same ad can we switch the verbiage maybe change the size or you know um maybe run it you know instead of doing it every quarter you know every issue how about we do it every quarter or, or something like that and try it out you know so i think that that would be excellent because you're continuing to foster relationship yeah those are really good ideas i didn't even consider like saying hey you've been running a full page for a while what if you back down to a half page for a few issues and just see how it goes you know i, I love that valerie so thank you yeah, well, thank I, that's why I love you. you have a really good, pure, generous heart, like you're giving and giving and giving. Um, so I, I love working with you. I truly do. And I would recommend anybody that was looking for a lead capture page or looking for an autoresponder system or training system to definitely contact you. Yeah, thank um, you. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, I want to do a better job of, of uh, promoting you and your business. I, oh, I really do appreciate you. Too. Yeah, well, I, it's, it's, it's mutual. I mean, day one, it was like... <laughs> like one heart you know what you know kindred spirits you know i mean yeah, yeah. They recommended through one of my mentors and you know just communicating with you by email was just there was just such an ease and i could feel like okay how can i help you and you know the mm -hmm. suggestions and recommendations and so forth because i put my first ad out with you in your magazine and was so excited and looking for recommendations and saying, hey, Bob, what do you think about this? So I love that you're in the trenches with the business owners. I love that. Mm -hmm. And so with that being said, talk to us about your uh, journey in the trenches with us business owners and marketers and all that. Talk to us about, you know, about that. Like, what would you want to share from your experience from being in the trenches with business owners and kind of um yeah why. yeah so <clears throat> i'm just trying to think where to go with that i mean <laughs> yeah i mean there's it's weird because after you know after so long you know when you first get started you don't have a lot of relationships and then you start building some and some go one way and some go the other and um but over time i think people really get to know each other and if, if they come you know with an attitude of cooperation like hey how can i help this person um, I have a, a gentleman named Dr. Dick Pritchard, and he's been running on page three of our magazine for probably 11 years or 12 years. And he had, like, like you suggested, you have to change up your ad sometimes and keep it fresh. He will run it consistently for maybe two or three issues, about four to six months, and then he will change it up a little bit. Um, 
And then one of the things I, you know, it wasn't like purposeful, but like the idea just comes in your mind. It's like, hey, how can I help Dr. You know, Dr. Pritchard a little bit? And I thought this guy's been around for a long time. He could teach me a lot about marketing and about life. Right. So I, I approached him. I said, Dr. Dick, you know, is there any way that you would be able to maybe write an article? And he was like, oh my gosh, I've always wanted to write. And, That's you know, awesome. and, and he started writing articles, you know what I mean? And, and it's, it helps me, it helps him and it helps the readers. You know what I mean? Um, trying to think who else. Um, there's a guy, Mike Aikens, like he's on page seven. I've, I've known Mike for probably 20 years. And he's another, like one of these guys, big time networker, you know, probably makes close to a million dollars a year in residual income, but he's a minister. He's a pastor. He lives very modestly. He, he pays for people's I mean, he, he actually takes care of homeless people where he lives in Hutchinson, Kansas. Um, just an amazing man. And, and same thing with the article there. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I guess it's like, you, you know, you want to work with the people who, who want to work with you yeah. and then just, you know, try to be a blessing. And it, it really does come around. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it goes, you know, it goes around, comes around. Yeah, um, absolutely. I agree. So what about the, for people who may be starting out and trying to find out uh, what are some of the best marketing, like where do they begin? You know, you, you know, there's so much out there with funnel building, squeeze pages, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the search engine optimization. I mean, you can really get squirrely, you know, mm -hmm. so for those who are trying to, I know for me, and I'll speak for me, I had to really look at what was in my hands, you know, like as that. far as resources that I have, connections that I have, the, the experts, um, you know, folks that I know I can glean from, mentors, folks that who are better in certain areas than I am, and really sit down and look at and evaluate my resources and say, okay, out of those resources, um, like for example, you know, I've got a marketing pool. And it's like, okay, out of this marketing pool, there's all these marketing strategies, but now being able to tap in what marketing tool is right for Valerie with her business of dimensional talent streams. And so mm -hmm. I guess my point is for folks, you know, who are startup businesses um, or they're still trying to work out what's the best way, what's the best stream of advertising, what would you say to them? What would you say for them to where to start? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. My, I had another mentor in my life, this guy, Phil Lonecker. Um, he always talked about how the, um, what was it? Exposure is everything and the fortune is in the follow-up. So for me, I would ask or talk to that new business owner. And this is something I've been really thinking a lot about the last couple of weeks. So I'm glad you talk about this because um, I think a lot of times a, a new marketer or an affiliate marketer will kind of look at their business. Like they'll, they'll get involved with a business and they'll They'll get a, a URL and they'll just think, you know, my, my company is all about selling this one thing, this one product. And I don't, I've come to believe that's not really what it's all about. I really believe that, you know, you, you, you own your own personal services company, what, whatever you do. Right. Um, and you're, I think, you, I think the thing that you have to most focus on is building your list. And I think if you build a list and just keep adding to that list daily and updating your list. Um, and then keep it in contact with those people because um, I do have I do have advertisers that have been with advertised for many 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 years and they don't necessarily market their business opportunity that you know the company that they represent as much as they market themselves and I think that's so much better because Ooh. you know what I have to offer you today might not be what you like Ooh. but I might have something else to share with you later do you know what I mean so yes. And, so I think it is, especially right now, I think it is about having like multiple side hustles, create multiple streams of income, you know, but, and, and your focus isn't on seven different things. Your focus is always on one thing, building your list and marketing to your list. Mm -hmm. um, that's where the money is. That's where the business is. That's where the relationships are. I think that's where everything is. I mean, right now, I'll bet you everyone listening to this, almost everyone listening to this, you know, uh, Zoom they have 300 contacts in their cell phone. That's the start of your list. Those are your friends, your families, your business associates, your prospects. They're all right there. 
it might not be the perfect place for them um, because you might want to put them in Aweber or you might want to put them in, um, you know, actually build their list with you, you know, put upload that list, get the text messages, get the email messages going, um, work with work with people like Valerie to to get to, to start marketing to that list and letting people know, you know, here's what I'm doing right now. Here's how I can help you. Here's how I help someone else. Here's how they can help you. And it's just about, you know, really just trying to communicate as best as we can with each other. Um, but I, I, I think it's just like, stop, stop trying to market, 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 and just build your list, you mm. know? Mm, and good. yeah, so I don't know. That's what I'm trying to do for my business. That, that is know? so good. That's so, so good. And it's, this, it's, this is why it's so important to have collaborations and to really foster relationship because you can begin to uh, pull off of one another and, and learn their strategy and what they're doing and what's working for them and, and really um, get some fresh wind just get because you mm -hmm. can really just kind of get really dry and just mm -hmm. feel like you're on a hamster wheel. And so it's so mm -hmm. good to do collaborations and have partnerships and, and whatnot to really hear you know, what's out there, what folks are doing, things we may not have heard of and, and whatnot, and just to kind of just keep things fresh and that fresh one, so that is so good. You said something that was so key and I was like, oh, <laughs> you said we get so caught up in marketing the product when we should be marketing ourselves. Yeah, right. Talk about that. <laughs> um. Well, like, look at that book back there, you know, over your shoulder. Like, I, I look at that book and I'm like, that's, that's your product. And it's a fabulous product. People are going to want that. They're going to want to buy it. They're going to want to share it. They're going to want to give it away. Uh, but I think if you spent all of your time marketing your book, it just communicates the wrong message as far as it does, like, you know, like you're doing with me, like you're spending your time, you know, helping me you know, promote my business. And, and at the same time, you're promoting yours a little, you know, a little bit. And, mm -hmm. and I, I just think that the more people learn who Valerie Williams is, and who you are, they're going to want to know about this book and the next book and the zoom and the webinar. And it's, you know, the, the you know, like who you are. I, I don't know what the right word is, but um, and another, I have an idea about that book too. Is that, <laughs> I can see the wheels <laughs> turning. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Well, just just talking to you. So it's about the heart, right? It's about it's about your heart. And um, and I, I always think about selling to organizations, not selling, but communicating with organizations. Like, I if 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 I had a book like that, like I would love to share that with like a hundred pastors, and and I'd be willing to like give that book to a hundred pastors and say, hey. I would love to talk to your congregation about, about this. And, and, and the neat thing is that one person can lead you to a hundred people. And I guess that's influence marketing. I, you know, I guess that's what, you know, people do that all the time, but um, yeah, it's like try to find the one that leads you to the many. And that, that is so good because I mean, this is like, I'm going to be honest. I mean, I don't, I don't have a problem being honest. I, I did an, another interview. I had another guest on, was it Monday? And um I said to her, I love cross pollinating and I'm mm. not intimidated by people that know more than me. <laughs> and, yeah, and, right and just, it, because it's so liberating, Bob, it's so freeing. And I think that people just, um, they don't want to be exposed. They want to be covered up. You know, they want mm -hmm. to, they, they, they have this mask on and want to portray this image and then they have to live up and constantly maintain this image and and project and and it's That's a lot like, of work. It's a lot of work. It you know and it's like okay just just be you. I mean I have a video out there on my uh, YouTube channel called Permission Granted. I mean being permission granted to be you in business. And one mm -hmm. of my mentors, uh, Steve Krishenko. Uh, he really went to town on that. I interviewed him and I was like, just pulling off of him and said, talk about that because this is really what business owners need to hear and know because we get so stuck and in our little world and we almost can get to a point where we forget who we are. 
Mm -hmm. uh, because we are, we, we're hiding behind this brand or image or whatever that we're trying to portray to try mm -hmm. to be successful, that we can lose the core of who we really are. And speaking of that, I've got another video about recapturing identity in business. So for those of mm -hmm. listening, you need to subscribe to Dimensional Talent Streams YouTube channel because, you know, you really get not only you really get the real sauce, the behind the scenes and what's the nitty gritty and what's really going on in business, behind business, and just with you as a business owner or just as whatever your area of responsibility is in life. Maybe you're not a business owner, but you're a mom at all and you're taking care of kids. That is a responsibility and is very is just as important as a business owner. But you know, look, peeling back those layers and looking at the core of who you are. So I've got a video on recapturing identity in business mm -hmm. and life. So for people, subscribe, like, follow, um, and and really watch some of these videos. Not to blow my own horn, but you know, I'm thinking about. No, that sounds good. I'd like to watch them for sure. I'm just thinking about these videos that I've done, and it's like, okay, I'm standing on my soapbox to drive a point home, and we've hit we've hit this area that I think is so critical and important for uh, business owners to really kind of you know step back and say, okay, wait a minute, who am I? Because we mm -hmm. we don't want to be vulnerable. Business owners don't want to be vulnerable. And mm -hmm. so when you say to, you know, we're spending so much time marketing in our business, but who are you really? <laughs> who, right. Who, who is Valerie Williams? What is dimensional talent streams? You know, and that speaks to me even more because it's like, okay, I need to peel back my layers to say, okay, why is, what is dimensional talent streams? Why is dimensional talent streams, the message behind it so important to Valerie? What happened in Valerie's life for this to be birthed? And how does the book correlate to dimensional talent streams? And so I'll just answer my own question. <laughs> <laughs> You're, yeah, absolutely. So dimensional talent streams is really a business that is about generating multiple streams of income, you know, and I talk about the different streams, the residual, the passive income, and I identify all of those different um, income streams, but I consult and teach people how to do it naturally. So, you know, because when you think of multiple income streams, you're like, okay, wait a minute, I have a busy life this is going to be more work. How do I balance it? Da, 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 da. Yes, I would love to have more revenue and income. We all would, but it sounds like a lot of work. And so I really peel that back and get rid of that whole myth because it really comes out of your core, what you love to do, your natural skills, abilities, talents. And um, that is how you look at generating multiple income streams by looking at what you love to do, what your passion mm -hmm about what you do naturally. So mm -hmm. it all flows organically out of you. It's important to me because it goes back all the way to Genesis chapter one, where he talks about being fruitful, multiplying, subduing, you know, we have that in us. We have been given that sevenfold mandate. Mm -hmm. And so that's where the whole dimensional talent streams comes from all the way back in Genesis one for, you, you know, um, and it goes back to some of the parables the five talents, you know, you know, the owner, he had his servants, he gave them each a portion of money and told them to, you know, go and, and do business with it. And there was one who just hid it under his mattress, didn't do anything. There was one, he managed to collect interest. There was one, he doubled it. And so when the master came back and said, all right, what did you guys do? Let me see what you did. You know, the one who did nothing, it, it was not good. I mean, the, the, mm -hmm. the, the master said to the servant, you could at least put this in the bank and it would have collected interest and you would have grown that, you would have multiplied that. And so I look at that as um, that's another area of how dimensional talent streams were birthed. And you just think about what's going on today, COVID. And if we had um, some multiple income streams, we would be able to sustain or be able to pivot or be able to rebound, or it might not be as bad of an impact to us financially if we have some multiple income streams. And then the book now, The Ancient Paths of the Heart, is a little bit of a life journey of me. I'm originally from up north, Boston, Mass, and I moved to Moravian Falls, North Carolina. So it's a little bit about my journey and what I've learned in Moravian Falls, North Carolina. 
and how the Lord was really dealing with me and talking about the heart and why the heart is so important to him. We hear about David was a man after God's own heart. Why was he? I mean, what does that mean? You know, we've heard that in Christendom for so long, but what does that mean? He was a man after his own heart. What was God, what, what did God see in David's heart that he gave him that, that, that he made that statement? And so mm-hmm. I look at all of the scriptures about the heart, you know, you know, you know, so, uh, you know, having a man after her own, you know, being a man after or a woman after God's own heart, and then having, you know, um, a hard heart, scripture talks about having a hard heart. And so mm-hmm. it's looking at all of these hearts that are referenced in the Bible, and digging deeper as to, you know, why, what, what, what makes a hard heart. Um, and then you do a self-evaluation and say, oh, do I have a hard heart? You know, mm-hmm. am I a woman or a man after God's own heart? So I look at all of these references of the heart and I kind of do, you know, you do a little self-diagnosis, sort of to speak, mm-hmm. but I share my journey and how that all developed and why the, the heart is so important. And so when you think about business, what's the heart of your business? <laughs> mm-hmm. You can relate that to what kind of heart does your business have? Is it a hard hearted, you know, so you can kind of really marriage the two and do a diagnosis of your business. I'm in healthcare. And so healthcare and business and finance, they're all married. And so I, that's, that's my world. I kind of intermingle them and do these medical diagnoses on your business. And then going back to you, because you're the one who's in charge and stewarding your business. And so Mm. that's, that's how all that plays out. (laughs) That's great. I, I love learning more about you. You've got such a unique way to to explain things. And like you talked about the cross pollination. Um, I like that. I mean, I like how those two things work together and how you tie scripture into things. And, you know, I can just tell you're, you're speaking the truth when you're, you know, when you're talking to us, you know, having a conversation like this. And I don't know, I can just see you doing many, many things like, um, like just talking to you, like uh, there's a Joyce Myers ministry, there's the 700 club, um, just to get you on other platforms to share your story and your book. Um, I think you're going to do great things, but well, you already are doing great things, but I think you're you're just going to multiply. Thank you. you. But back to you, Bob. (laughs) No, I like talking about you better. But yeah, yeah. And I don't mind sharing my story. And it's a part of, like I said, bringing healing to finance, bringing healing to, to businesses and, you know, going back and again, looking at you as the core and the face of whatever business platform that you have and what you're doing in your life. So Bob, give us some tips. Now you have stressed, and you know, I want our viewers and listeners to hear this about the importance of building that list. So mm-hmm. I'm going to take you back there again. And I know in the beginning you outlined some steps on how to build. But mm-hmm. for those, you know, because we always have a mixed multitude, you know, we've got those who are advanced, the intermediates, and then we have the beginners. So let's peel back a little bit. And sometimes we need a reminder because we, we look at our list and we, get, we hide behind the automatic uh, email generation and sequencing and automatic texting and all that. Um, but talk to us about um, just building your list and give us kind of step one, step two, step three, and what mm-hmm. you recommend in really building that list and what that looks, looks like for you within your journey in the years that you have been doing this? Yeah, so I started with just a really simple Excel spreadsheet where I've got a spreadsheet and it has, you know, name, address, telephone number, email address. You know, if I got the guy's birth date, I'll, I'll mark that down. And over the years, like we've got probably 14 or 1500 people in our Excel spreadsheet, just people that you know, we, we know, I mean, some of the people we know really, really well, and some of the people might've ordered a mailing list five years ago, but, but they're getting a copy of the magazine. And then we also started using constant contact, um, Mm -hmm. uh, just an email auto response, yeah, an email database. So right now, I mean, my two ways to communicate with people are one-on-one, you know, with phone calls, Mm -hmm. I build a list through Excel because I, I still like mail. I like mailing. I mail postcards. I mail magazines. Like, I just think, I, people like tangible, like real world, everyone still has a mailbox. Um, so as long as they still have a mailbox, I would like to keep staying in that business because when you have a postcard sent to you, sometimes it goes straight in the trash, but sometimes it goes on, on a person's desk. Um, and I've been fortunate. Like uh, I've had, I've had advertisers say that they made two or $3,000 sales from a postcard they mailed years ago. 
You know what I mean? It just, it just happens um, because we don't always act right away. You know what I mean? We get something in the mail and interest us. Um, and then the email database. And, and I, I've heard a lot of people say lately, you know, that email, you know, their email box is, is overwhelming. They don't want to look at all those emails. And I just say, well, take responsibility of your email and, and unsubscribe to the list that you don't belong right. to. You know, I looked at my wife's email the other day and it was like Kohl's and JC Penney's and, and this and that. And I was like, yeah. oh, yeah, you're getting a hundred emails a day. And, and she's like, yeah, I know. I got to take some time to unsubscribe it. I'm like, well, God bless you, you know, but, um, and then texting, I think is the next thing. And, and I've been looking into that in my business and then asking myself, like when I get a text message, you know, if I go to GNC and buy some protein powder or something like that, and I get a text message that said, thanks for, you know, coming in today. I'm like, okay, great. I don't know. I, I think texting should, I mean, to me personally, just kind of remain between, you know, friends and clients. Um, I don't want like a big company to market to me through text or I'll just hit remove, remove, unsubscribe. So for me, direct mail and email are my channels for communicating with people. Um, and then I don't know about that. What do you think of the text marketing? Um, it's, it's kind of, it kind of falls in line. It's a part of the whole digital, the whole digital marketing where everything is online. Mm -hmm. Um, and some people, a lot of people do very well, uh, with the text blasting and the email blasting mm -hmm. for me, I personally, I mean, I do it in my business, but I like talking to people like yourself. Like I, you know, I'll, I'll pick up the phone and call somebody. And I just think about for me personally, I get so much spam on like my cell phone, spam text and spam phone calls. And if it's somebody that I don't know, I automatically just like unsubscribe or say stop, you know, mm -hmm. so, but it's kind of like a hit or miss and it really is falling in that vein with that digital marketing. And so you really have to think about you and the core of who you are and what you, and getting back to your passion and what you like to do and mm -hmm. what you're comfortable with doing. And then you stick to that. And then you stick mm -hmm. to that. I mean, a lot mm -hmm. of people are doing it. I will say that because it's a whole part and everybody like everybody's on their cell phones. And that's why this it's so huge now about texting and emailing because everybody's on their on their cell phone and they and they feel that they will go to that quicker than they will an email. Like they feel like mm -hmm. email is practically phased out like the last resort, you know, mm -hmm. and if you want to get a hold of somebody, you text them. <laughs> If you want to get right. a response, you text them. So that's the whole methodology behind that. But I would say, look at, you know, look at who the core of who you are, what you like to do, because if it's something that if you're going to try texting and emailing, you better be a believer of it because otherwise mm -hmm. you're not going to be consistent with it. You, it's, you, it's just going to come across that you are not passionate about that particular area of uh marketing and engaging your list so mm -hmm. yeah 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 and then like facebook comes to mind <clears throat> you know it's like well how can you use facebook to build relationships and build your business um like i know for me if i go to my facebook page and i post something like hey we've got a deadline coming up for the magazine i might get like a couple of views and maybe two or three likes but if I put a picture of my, my daughter doing gymnastics, it gets like a hundred likes, you know? So it seems like Facebook, when it's that, when it's that kind of messaging, like I'm posting on my feed, you know, it is good just to share pictures of your kids and your family. And, you know, maybe if you had like a scone and a coffee for breakfast, I right, guess. Right, right. but I think how I've been using Facebook late, you know, for the last couple of years really is not, not like um, publicly, but privately is like, you see someone and you, you know, you see someone that you might want to work with in your business or who might be a good customer or client and learn about them, look at their Facebook page, contact them on Messenger. I'll get their email address and their phone number. I'll say, hey, can I send you some information by mail? Right. And just kind of build a relationship. You know right. what I mean? Like, so I, I don't think it's like a shotgun approach. Like, hey, I'm going to tell everybody I've got this great opportunity and they're going to make $100,000 a year the first year. Maybe you will. But I think it has to start really small. Right. You know, and I'll just target one person at a time and maybe target sounds like too much of a, a yucky word, but it, I mean, I, I'm just like, Hey, I want to work with this person. What, what's it going to take to figure out if I can help them and they can help me, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. do you use Facebook like that or. 
Yeah, I do use social media a lot. You'll see it in my email signature. <laughs> Yeah, nice. You know, and it's it's I use social media for um mainly for branding mm -hmm. and just to kind of get my name out there and to share kind of you know who I am, the business opportunity, and like you said, for people to see a personal side of me. And I I, I gotta be honest, I gotta work on that because sometimes I do, to be honest, I'm all about business and mm -hmm. I am trying to balance it and really show people my personal side. And, you know, so I'll have some pictures of me on vacation or I'll have a little picture of my four-legged baby, my poodle, and, you know, <laughs> kind of see that soft side and say, okay, she, she's, she's a person, she, she does have some kind of a life. And so I will use it for that. And I will also use it just like you said, to kind of, um, kind of see who I can collaborate with kind of see who I can, uh, you know, get some interest. Like there's a platform called Alignable, that, Alignable, and I love that platform, all business owners. And it really is just getting to know your community, businesses in your community, or you can take it more, you know, more stretched out by radius. You can do it nationally. But I really wanted to, you know, target the businesses in my area and get to know what was going on in my own backyard. Mm -hmm. And so I got on this platform for that and to collaborate and figure out what people's needs are in business and how to help them and da 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 da. And I have met some great people, you know. Um, as a matter of fact, some, one of them I met invited me as a permanent guest on her podcast and said, and gave me a platform on her podcast permanently <laughs> out of just collaborating. And I just pulled her on and was cross pollinating with her and, you know, did some interviews with her. And then she said, Hey, you know, I want to extend to you, you know, why don't you come on my platform and, you know, do a podcast and just be a regular <laughs> podcaster on my platform, on my radio show. And I was like, okay, why not? <laughs> yeah, that's great. I, you know, I like that. But it, it all started, it's just collaborating, getting to know people. And, you know, like you said, you love to know how you can help people. So, you know, I use that to figure out, okay, you know, this person is interesting. Ooh, they're into podcasting and I do podcasting. Maybe I can learn more from them. They do radio and TV. I can learn more from them and I'm going to talk to them and strike up a conversation. And so mm -hmm. you just kind of start there. It's not about getting that sale up front. It's again, fostering the relationship and, and collaborating and doing that cross pollination. So I, you know, I use social media for that. I will put up like an ad up there every so often and say, you know, and say, hey, I'm running a special or, you know, like for example, um, my platform has done some tweaking. I've narrowed it down and built like a niche Pacific uh, software. So all of the home businesses like lawn care and plumbers, you know, we've kind of broke down the platform. So that instead of getting all the kitchen sink, we're just giving them exactly what we know they need. And so I've, you know, we built this platform to kind of drill it down. So hair salons, platform specifically for them, where they, they're not getting the whole sink, they just get what they need as a hair salon. And so built that up. So I kind of put something out there about that to just kind of say, hey, you know, here's yeah. you know, people, blah, 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 for you, you know, home business people who are helping, you know, home services, here's this, da, 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 mm -hmm. you know, so yeah, I, I can do that. I know a printing company that did what you are talking about doing. It was a postcard printing company. And what they did is they, they found a chiropractor, you know, that every door direct mail where you can mail postcards to everyone in your town for like 17 cents a card. Um, it's easy. Yeah. It's easier for the, the postmaster. Cause he's just going to go, if he knows he has 500 people on his route, he just puts a postcard in everyone's box. So instead of paying 35 cents for a card, it's like 17 cents for a card. Okay. So anyway, this postcard marketing company, they found out, they found a chiropractor and he started mailing out 5,000. Uh, I think there was 10,000 people in his town. He started mailing out 5,000 postcards through every door direct mail. And it did really well. You know, it was cost effective where his return on the investment was enough that he can continue to mail those postcards um, and maybe it was six times a year, 12 times a year. It doesn't matter what it was. And then after they found, okay, this postcard works for this chiropractor doing every door direct mail, they took that same postcard to the next town over, the next town over, the next town over. And I think now that printing company has over 300 uh, employees. Uh, wow. Postcard 
Wow. Um, and then, uh, and then once they did it with chiropractors, they're like, okay, let's do it with dentists. You know, dentists have a great business. I mean, they don't have to mess around with the healthcare insurance that doctors, you know, many other doctors do. It's a residual business, you know? Um, so they found some postcards that work for a dentist and then just took it out to all the dentists across the country. Um, and, I mean, these guys, went from like a company i'm like wow you know wow. that's that's neat yeah that is neat that is neat that's amazing that is amazing so lastly uh bob give us in our last few minutes of wrapping up here give us if you could say i want to leave listeners viewers with this what would it be mm-hmm. Um, I guess I'd flip back over to the spiritual side and say every morning when I wake up, I'm just grateful to God, you know, that I'm alive and I ask him for guidance throughout the day because I'll just be like, God, what am I supposed to do next? And I think you develop systems that work for you. You know, you always say you be you like for me to be me. um, I wake up, I'm grateful to God that I'm alive. And I say, what am I supposed to do? And for me, it means check your voicemail, check your email, you know, check your messages and then I, I check emails from the bottom up, you know what I mean? Like I, uh, I just have, you know, you, you work your system and, um, you know, I just, I just listen and I ask and I try to obey and I'll make a mistake and he'll correct me and, you know, (laughs) I'll come back around. But, um, besides that, I mean, it's, you know, keep working on building your list, build your list, um, direct mail and email, especially, you know, Facebook messenger, whatever you got, you know, put them in, put them as contacts in your cell phone. Um, because those are your people you know, and, uh, that's your tribe, right? So exactly. That is your tribe. So true. So true. Well, Bob, I want to thank you for gracing us here again, here at Dementia Talent Streams and just being so hospitable and just so transparent and just, just a wealth of information and just the simplicity and transparency that you have. So I want to thank you for being here at Dimension of Talent Streams. If you have a second, Bob, stay on, stay on with me after I, after I end this. That's going to do it for us here again at Dimension of Talent Streams. I'm Valerie Williams. I will see you guys next week. Again, like, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Dimension of Talent Streams, and also catch me every Thursday, TW3Radio.com every Thursday, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and also on a new platform, um, Lena Jones, LJDNPodcast.com every Saturday and Tuesday, run them all day. See you guys next week. And thank you again. And you be fruitful and multiply.